Hello, sleepyheads. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Remy and I make ASMR videos. Today's video is a continuation of the story time about why my partner and I are having a kind of stinky summer so far. Um, I'm just going to pick up where I left off. This one's also going to be entirely soft-spoken. And so you may be a little lost if you haven't watched the first part. But maybe you don't mind and you're okay just dropping in. Just want to let you know this is essentially a big event big emotional unloading. So lots of belly aching, quetching, moaning and groaning, pissing and moaning, bitching and moaning. Um, yeah, all those pretty rude terms for complaining. My, my dad used some pretty harsh language around complaining. He was very anti-complaining. When I was growing up, he seemed always to be of the opinion that anyone under 50 does not have a right to complain about anything, anything at all. So yeah, he would say, quit your, quit your belly aching, quit your, I mean, that was, again, one of the nicer, nicer ways he would put it. But this is my ASMR channel. And I can do whatever I want. I just want to flag for you that, that that's what this video is going to be um, by nature. So you can steer clear of it if you're not in a space for that. Like you don't find this relaxing as a prospect. Me complaining about car trouble, I totally understand and just letting you know, no stoicism ahead. Um, I'm just getting a lot off my chest and hoping that it may be relaxing and interesting to some of you. So I'm going to jump, jump right in. Um, I'm going to go a lot faster for this one, um, just so I don't fry my throat. My tonsils were super swollen after the last one, after I filmed the first part. Um, I like, couldn't, could not speak very easily the rest of that day. So I definitely don't want to go as long today. Um, I have my trusty throat code and I actually have two tea bags keeping just for extra, extra soothing, extra help, all the slippery elm I can get. And I'm also going to give myself a break by not worrying too much about the particulars of the, the car. Drama. Like, I'm gonna give you the specifics, but... The amount of information I've absorbed over the last month about this car, and to some extent, cars of a similar make in general. Um, you know, hybrids, specifically second generation Priuses more than I've ever more than I would ever want to know and more than I can possibly retain like it's like the equivalent of cramming for an exam there's so much stress there and you're like pounding so much information into your into your brain that most of it, you're just leaning on your short-term memory, and once you get through that experience, immediately you start 
losing some of it, the retention just is bound to be low. So, just saying, I'm not going to trouble myself too much with the car vernacular. I figure that's not why most of you are here, and if you do know a lot about cars and you hear something that's off or incorrect, Feel free to comment for the edification of everyone else. Just a warning that I'm probably not going to engage much with it because I can't. I cannot. It's too soon. I don't want to know. I just, I just need a break. Again, I've, I've taken in more information about cars in the last few weeks than I can even handle. So, something's gotta give. I need to free up my brain space again. And so I need to not put pressure on myself again to like, get it all perfect. I think having gone so far down the rabbit hole with this car drama it's like something I'd want to or be at risk of info dumping about. Um, I can definitely info dump. And I don't know a lot about cars. I don't know much about cars still. But all the information I did kind of aggregate in my universe imposed crash course, I would want to take this opportunity to info dump, to give myself like a sense of closure, and because it's just the way I work, I'm gonna try to resist that temptation and keep things more general. So yeah, fingers crossed. This video can be fewer takes or fewer, you know, cuts than the last one. I'm not making any guarantees. I have heard the crows on my street being pretty active already today, and yeah, you never know when they may return and get really vocal again, depending on, I guess, their meal schedule, their roosting, stuff like that. So, yeah, but it would certainly be nice um, I, I do want to give soft-spoken fans something really pleasant to the ear, and I personally don't find the squawking crows very relaxing, even though a little bit adds some nice ambiance. They've been really worked up lately. Maybe it's a summer thing. I'm not going to worry about it. But yes, it would be lovely if I could have some cleaner footage, cleaner, longer takes this time, an easier edit for me, and a smoother final result for you all. So, fingers crossed. Just gonna do a little adjusting there. So, yes, my partner's car broke down on the highway, and he, he was just despairing in that moment because he didn't even know how to get out of that situation without the time crunch, the stakes of this audition he did not want to miss after how much we put into making it all work out for him, making sure he could have that opportunity, and even setting that aside, he was in a situation that would be really stressful, and with 6% of your phone battery left, and a car that's dead on the side of the highway, and not even like, not even on a shoulder, but just kind of on the outside of that exiting lane. Yeah, he was really freaked out, really upset 
understandably so. He's really good in a crisis, like his spatial awareness, his ability to stay calm, like he's saved us a lot of times, many times in the car just with his fast reaction time. You know, seeing a car swerve or pull out where it's not supposed to be. And, you know, I've been in the passenger seat and seen it coming right at me, and he's... He's been really... He's just really good at stuff like that, better than I am. And, you know, I've been joking before, and he's stayed super calm and just kind of gone into emergency mode, like almost automatic. So, these are good qualities he has, and so when he's overwhelmed like this, it's because there's something logistically really confusing or stressful, like it's not as simple. There's something not so simple about staying calm when someone's joking, but there's also in terms of what's required of the task, a kind of straightforwardness. I think he tends to panic when he's like completely burned out in terms of his logistical logistical brain and that's where I shine. So it's also easier when when it's when you're a little bit outside it and obviously it's my emergency too because I care about my partner so much, but I'm also a little bit outside it because I'm not there at the scene with him and some resources that he doesn't. You know, I had a phone charge sufficient to do lots of research really quickly and not worry about running out the clock without worrying about running out of phone battery and just being stranded. So I just jumped in and I was like helping him to stay calm and saying, okay, get everything you need out of the car. Get your like top kit and a charger, like, you know, even though it doesn't work, the car is dead. Just get it in case you can plug it into someone else's, like if you get picked up by AAA or something, like, just take everything you need out of the car, house keys, and get to the side and, you know, like, give me your location anytime you change it. So what's your current address? Like, where are you on the highway? What's the closest exit? How close are you to that exit? Are you, like, within a hundred? yards instead of just relying on like dropping a pin just while he was on the phone with me in case he didn't make it to that point because his phone could like die any minute, right? So tell me where you are and, and then I, I called oh yeah, I told him anytime you go anywhere if you move at all just update me, update me, update me until your phone dies I always want to know where you are and if your phone dies, don't move from the last location you gave me, right? So he does all that, he's seeming like he's holding it together and I start doing some research, I call highway services and say that there's a car broken down at such and such point on the, I guess it was the 5, 5 North, and is that right? I give him the highway, and you know, his exact location, and then I call him back and I say, okay, so they're gonna come tow you off the highway. I think that's all they do, so let's get AAA going. Maybe you can have your dad work on that while I stay in touch with highway services. Just let your dad know what's going on as well and have him be working on it, too. And, and he's saying that, you know, in his discouragement, he's like, I know what this is. This is the back battery, not like the front, like, 12 volt battery that all cars have. This is like the big hybrid battery in the rear end second generation Priuses, maybe some other, some other generations as well. Um, the, the batteries tend to die after like a hundred 
thousand miles and he just bought this car used third hand third hand a year prior so it seemed like he was drawing the short straw and it was going to die on him so he couldn't recall whether it had already been replaced in its lifetime by one of the two prior owners one of whom is a friend like he bought it used from a friend who was moving to New York and that friend had bought it used so yeah um, so he wasn't sure but he was pretty sure that it had not died yet but as of when he bought it it had well over a hundred thousand miles maybe closer to a hundred and fifty thousand miles so he knew that he was probably drawing the short straw, or I guess it's more like musical chairs, and the music was likely to stop on his, his turn, because that's not how that works. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. The way it lined up, it was likely to be under his ownership. So that's obviously a huge bummer. That's a really expensive replacement. Like, the two most expensive... I mean, there are all kinds of super costly things that can happen to any car, but the things that are specifically big bummer moments for Prius owners are um, with the catalytic converter and the hybrid battery. The hybrid battery is something of an inevitability, and like it's going to die at some point and need to be replaced, and, and the hybrid just doesn't work without it. And you're gonna spend several thousand dollars on that. You could go used, but that just risks, that's just kind of kicking the can down the road. There's a, a third option, but I'll get, I'll get to that later. And then the other um, liability, major kind of sticker shock moment for a lot of Prius owners regards the catalytic converter, it gets stolen quite a bit. That's a separate story, but in California, because of a lack of regulation, the, um, those thefts happen often. People just saw them off or just pull them out from under, under your hybrid and then your hybrid doesn't work anymore, like you can, you can only drive for like 20 minutes before you start doing some real damage to the car. And because they're getting stolen so much in California, and there hasn't been much of like a crackdown to the extent that is necessary. Not saying I'm a proponent of any, any arm of law enforcement cracking down, but more like it would certainly be helpful if junkyards didn't accept these parts without proof of ownership, proof of purchase, you know, serial number or something like that. There, there are ways that things could be made safer for the consumer. Right now it's kind of a free-for-all, you know, um, and there's not a lot of incentive for shops to to also facilitate better regulation because they're making a killing. I mean, this is very misanthropic, but they're making a killing on selling these parts. Like, the demand for them is so high and the labor, you know, of, of installing them and installing cat catalytic converter shields that only really deter theft. Um, can't really fully prevent it if someone's determined enough. Anyway, this is a whole side story, but yeah, right now it costs between three and four thousand dollars on average in California to replace that part. And my partner had his stolen within the first three or four months of having this car. So, so he was feeling just really panicky the prospect of... He's like, I don't know what else would be. It's gotta be the back battery, right? 
that's everything he was seeing online anyway, and I was just like, okay, well don't We don't know that yet Maybe we should We don't know that yet And I saw that there was a Toyota shop Like this whole place Like the whole area where he'd broken down near Carlsbad Had lots of Toyota shops like Mm, the showroom, and then like, uh, and then a repair, like an auto shop, and I think a few other like little satellite locations for like special, specialty repair, I'm not sure, but certainly several Toyota locations, but the one he needed to get to was the auto repair one, and the one, you know, that I saw from the reviews dealt with the hybrids and so the exit right before which he broke down if you just continue off it right off the exit was the Toyota showroom the kind of HQ of that whole hub of Toyota as well I think like the front desk was there and right across Highway, like equidistant, like the mirror image of this well, practically, practically the mirror image of this showroom, there was the repair shop so I told him to maybe ask the tow person, the highway patrol, highway um, services tower to please, if they could, just tow him a little farther, like 60 seconds farther, like literally just off the highway and then cross underneath the highway and you're there, essentially and he was like, okay, I'll try, I'll try and I was like, just wait there, I'm sure they'll come soon because it's kind of an emergency to have cars broken down on highways especially when there's not a, a sufficient shoulder, like it's just not safe and so they're gonna come, just hold, hang tight and keep updating me if your location changes but when they get there, you're gonna ride with them so ask if you can plug in your phone and also just level with them and ask them if they can make an exception and not just tell you off the highway but tell you a little 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 farther once they already have your car you know rigged up and again this is something that could come down to just appealing to someone's um, empathy to their generosity so just to try and because it would make a huge difference for us because then we could have it at Toyota and maybe they could fix whatever's going on and you could be on your way and if they won't do that then we're going to have to wait for AAA to come to do the same thing to just, you know, we're going to have to use one of our four annual AAA calls just to go, like, they'll tow you up to seven miles but to go, like, a tenth of a mile or whatever it was something ridiculous so that was the game plan, and he hangs up, and I am just still doing research. I'm calling that Toyota location to let them know that we're coming, and to ask what the wait time is, all these things. So he's updating me as much as he can without, you know, being lavish with his scanty, his last little bit of phone battery, but I at least know from like a really short text that the highway services have come and 10 or however many minutes later very stressful for me because I'm trying not to waste his phone battery, you know, again pestering him, but I don't know what's going on and I'm continuing to do lots of research sorry, someone's vacuuming and um then the next update is that Highway Services has towed him off the highway and he's really angry because they refused 
to help him out, like he offered the person cash and they would not, would not, would not tell him even like, even an inch beyond, like they said, you can pick somewhere right off the highway, I'll put you there and that's it. So I was kind of preparing for that to be the case and like I do kind of get it, we both logically understand, but just sucks because it made things so much harder for us. And he was like, I begged, and this person was just not receptive, and maybe they just absolutely cannot, you know, they can't make any exceptions for one person, or, you know, that would not be fair to everyone else. But it's good to ask, because sometimes people, it isn't that big a deal, especially if that technician has nothing else, no one else waiting on them, nothing else going on imminently, right? So he's so bummed out, he's down to like 3% and he's like, there's no way AAA is going to get here, like AAA can take well, you never know how long AAA will take, right? So, and his, his dad is not super available to help, it's hard when someone's in the middle of their work day and it's not life or death, even if even if it's really important to you, it's not necessarily urgent in their eyes once you're, you know, relatively safe. So I think his dad was, was trying, but it was kind of down to what the two of us could accomplish with so little phone battery left. So I was like, maybe AAA can just tow the car. I mean, I was talking crazy, right? But I was like, maybe AAA can tow the car without you there, and, you know, I can get you a lift. And he was like, I can't lift. That's gonna be so expensive, and, and, like, I don't even have it downloaded on my phone. I was like, I'll call you a lift. I'll call you a lift. Where are you now? And he was like, I'm right in front of the Toyota showroom. And he was looking at the signage of the, the street parking into which into which he'd been towed you know curbside on this long stretch this kind of drag of you can picture roads that have lots of like car dealerships on them so he was on one of those and he was like I think I think Bubs the car Bubs <laughs> I think Bubs is okay here till midnight and I could hear him kind of working it out in his head, and I was like, great, that settles it, I'm gonna call you a lift, we'll worry about the car later, let's get you to that audition, and he was like, I can't, I can't ask you to do that, I can't ask you to put a tow from Carlsbad to Los Angeles in the middle of afternoon traffic on your credit card, a lift, did I say a lift? A lift, that expensive on your credit card, and I was like, come on, man, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's get you to that audition, and I think what sold him was, I was like, look, it's $150, and it guarantees you'll be there by 3.53, and that casting office was only open until 4, but I was like, it can still happen, it can still happen, and I think he needed a minute. I think he needed a minute to think about it because I wasn't getting a response back and I was like, oh no, has his phone died? Like the texts were going through very slowly, so at times it looked like his phone had died and I was like, okay, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And I was like, listen, stay at that location, don't move, and if I don't hear back from you in like two minutes, I'm sending the lift. And, and he texted back and he was like, send it. And I was like, yes, let's do this. Let's do this thing. So then I got to watch from my phone as the Lyft driver like got closer and closer to him and, you know, last preparation, just make sure you have everything out of the car because he had a bunch of stuff within that day to go straight to the audition from 
from the passport office in San Diego to this audition in Glendale in Los Angeles County <laughs> It's in the valley. So he had a bunch of stuff with him. So I was like, get your top kit, get your change of clothes Make sure you have a charger in case the lift doesn't offer one and Get ready to go And make sure that bubs, nothing's sitting out to attract you know, window smashing. Make sure you have the keys, lock it up, let's go! Because I know he was super stressed. So I was just trying to like be a good like coach or dispatch, you know? Just guide him and champion him as much as I could remotely. And, and I sent him the Lyft driver's ETA and stuff like that, like pushed the notifications to his phone because Lyft lets you like buy a ride for someone else and syncs up with their phone so you can look on together and be in touch that way which was really handy in this situation so there was no way of knowing from his phone but the Lyft driver will toggle, will put it into the system that they've picked up their rider so the moment that I saw that he'd gotten into his lift and was on his way to Los Angeles, the ride had started I was so relieved so relieved yeah, it was such a good feeling and getting to watch his ETA and know that he might still make it to this taping, this final callback again, it was that feeling of Having made it to the next level, we were like still in the game. I'm not out yet, so then he got enough of a phone charge to be back online, be in touch with me, and things felt immediately lighter, even though it was so chaotic. And he had everything he needed, he was on his way, his phone was charging, and we just talked briefly and talked about like making sure he put the car stuff out of his mind and also like resisted the temptation to walk in to the casting and just like unload all of this that was bound to be front of mind for him but it could go either way like either someone could be really wowed by your commitment and your perseverance or they could feel like your personal trauma is distracting from what, in their eyes, is the most important thing going on that day, which is casting, which is casting their commercial for a big client. So we agreed that he had like two hours now, nearly two hours, to just get into a good, calm, focus headspace and put all the chaos of the morning out really the last the last few days aside to the extent to the extent possible so then he was focusing on that and I turned my attention to calling Toyota trying to formulate the next part of our plan and you know making sure like oh he had had before thought it was really good. He called AAA to let them know not to come. You know, he didn't he didn't want to waste their time, especially given that it would be possibly the same local contractor later, you know, when we needed a tow still later that night to make sure the car didn't sit there after midnight and get ticketed. So we didn't want to burn any bridges and waste our triple A call, so he took care of that, which was like a commendable amount of organization, given everything that he was balancing. So it was almost time to pick up the passport, and I'd been on the phone with Toyota, and I was asking, you know, we're not going to make it there by closing, but we do need to, to tow it to you all get diagnostics performed on this car and hopefully get a repair and 
you know, they were closing soon and they were super nice about it and they were like, you know, bring it in, bring it in, you can leave it on the lot overnight, just leave your keys in the drop box, here's where it is, so on and so forth. So that was nice, I felt like I knew what was going to happen next and then it was about time to go upstairs and try to get this passport. I went early, I went earlier than three and lo and behold there were more lines lines to go through security again uh, to be admitted into security again to line up to go to the check-in window to um and then to go to your your kind of like pickup appointment even though it's that part's really fast but you still get ticket and still have to wait for that. So the fact that there was more wait time at three and when I went, you know, when I finally got to the check-in window, they were like, yes, they, you know, took his name and they were like, it's not ready yet, take a seat, wait for your ticket to be called. And I was like, fuck, because, you know, if he gets there at 3.53 but doesn't have his passport, until like four because again the window they gave us from three to four so if it took until four then he'd be walking into this casting office minutes before they closed still with no passport but thankfully that worked out they called my number after 20 15 or 20 minutes and I went to the window looked at his beautiful brand new passport checked that nothing was misprinted you know, I had to sign on the dotted line and verify that all the information was correct and I was so nervous I checked it like three times I could hardly believe my eyes <laughs> and I walked out with it and there were several other people leaving with their passports and we were all like I think the atmosphere would have been giddier if not for the fact that everyone was that everyone was a little bit harrowed <laughs> so it was a very like shell-shocked ride but in the elevator down And yeah, so then I sent my partner the picture and it was such an exciting moment. He was so happy. It seemed again like we were going to live to see another day, proverbially speaking, like in this whole quest, getting through to the next, next part. And it was really starting to look like he was going to walk into that callback with a picture of a valid passport as if nothing had happened. He'd just been kept late on set. So they'd have no idea what we'd been through. In fact, the joke between us was that the passport had been forged in the fires of hell and it may have cost us beyond all the time and energy and $245 for the passport, the rushed passport, $150, I think that's with tip but for the lift and all the gas money, you know, gas money to get to San Diego and back seemed like it would also maybe cost us a car. So <laughs> truly the passport from hell and the passport acquisition process from hell, even though we were super lucky. You know, the timeline was incredible and we were super grateful. It seemed like it may have cost us a lot more than we thought. So, 
and we had no idea at that point how bad it would get but for now we were elated things were looking up and the only issue was his Lyft driver would not would not leave him alone he was trying to go over his lines and get focused and he had just the chattiest most socially unaware Lyft driver like apparently he had to say over and over again that he needed some, some quiet and to no avail it just was not received and the Lyft driver would not stop talking and trying to engage him in conversation thinking like, wow, what a wild experience you've had and, you know, I want to keep keep talking about it, keep connecting over it so that sucked and my partner was like super socially fried going into that callback which was not ideal given how much stress he was already holding and trying to get past to put his best foot forward but I just kept telling him, I was like, you're their top choice like, you're their top choice they've waited all day, if they saw anyone that they liked nearly as much they probably would not have waited until four and they're still waiting for you so, you've got this you've got this, you've got this, you've got this so my last update from him, he was going into the audition and we joked, we were like, I wonder if anyone's gonna look at your passport and notice that today is June 24th, 2022 and it says it was issued on June 24th, 2022 that would be, f- that would be funny that would be funny, I'm sure. I'm sure there would be some questions. Um, I just want to like, just smile blankly at them if they ask and be like, yes. Because again, on one hand, it shows how committed you are, but on the other hand, it exposes a lie you told about where you were and where your agent says you were all day so and lots lots of lies leading up to that point about a non-existent passport so at that point I I'm just churning with this weird mix of relief and anxiety because you know each time we progress, we move forward beyond, you know, some some sort of obstacle there's a sense of victory, of accomplishment but then there's still a lot left to to do and about which to angst, to worry so I'm just doing my own car research search and trying to weigh our options just be ready when when it's time, you know, he gets to focus on the addition, but but I may as well focus on what comes next you know, we're gonna have to eventually make our way back to Bob's parked on the side of the road in Carl's bath and it would be good to have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C just going into it so at this point, I'm standing in the lobby bathroom I'm kind of alone in the building except for a few stragglers because, you know, the passport office closes at four and eventually the last few people making their way out, you know, the last appointments, the last pickups, all those eventually pass and people start to pack it in and go home. So 
So at this point I'm standing in the bathroom to charge my phone at one of the only available outlets and I'm trying to edit videos but it's just a little too stressful I'm doing what I can but mostly my mind is just fixated on seeing all this through and to a happy, affordable resolution a happy resolution. I get word from my partner that he's out of the audition and he's being really hard on himself. He feels that he was really flustered, understandably so, but super on edge coming out of that really chatty lift. And you know, carrying so much stress in his body and he thinks it did not go as well and he may have knocked himself out of the running so he's feeling not sure if he's just um, being pessimistic or if, like, he just, he doesn't know what to think. But he's able to call in a favor. He's able to call a friend who lives near the casting office and him get a ride home, get dropped off so that he can get my car to come get me. And with traffic, he's not going to get there until, like, 8. So when the lobby closes at 6, and security guards have to ask me to leave. I'm just walking around San Diego. It does not feel great. Especially carrying my partner's original birth certificate and passports. <laughs> all these things and all these really important things in this fireproof folder and all my Bags. I'm just walking around, getting harassed a good amount, like things yelled at me on two different occasions, out car windows as, as people passed. So, yeah, I'm gonna skip over, but those few hours, those two hours were not super fun and I actually had a Zoom meeting to attend and I just had found my way. Of course, of course I had a meeting and I had found my way to like a, a Chipotle like patio, like the outdoor dining area and I was just sitting there and taking the Zoom meeting but when they put together that I was like not at home and you know they could they could see that I was calling in from my phone like in the middle of, of like a city block lots of background noise I was right next to the street they asked where I was and when I briefly explained they were like you you should go Remy you don't have to be here so um, eventually, eventually my partner found his way to me, the cavalry rode in, found his way to me, and we were on our way to Bob's to start dealing with that, figuring out how to, yeah, how to solve that emergent problem. So, I have to stop because I can't really um, speak anymore. It's getting to that point. I'm sorry it happened sooner today, probably because I did film part one last week and maybe my vocal cords didn't fully recover. So sorry, this is so protracted. This is also what tends to happen when I take on more ambitious story times like 
obviously the falling in love story time is I'm trying to cover like a year, more than a year of events and in this case I'm trying to go over a very densely packed month of like being consumed by these issues like my partner and I can both hyper fixate we are neurodivergent in different ways but that's something we can both be geared toward and it was a complicated situation especially to try to solve on a budget you know without leadening ourselves with lots of credit card debt so yeah, my partner actually developed an eye twitch for a while there and we were just not doing well <laughs> so we were not doing well, but that's all what comes next when we really get deep into the car drama and all the good things that that started kind of constellating around this, this, um, this mess, you know, the, the pile on of some like health stuff and, um, of some health stuff, some family stuff, some computer stuff. So, if you're enjoying hearing about stress, stressful stuff. If you're enjoying hearing all this and it's not stressing you out too much, the good news is, oops, the good news is there's still a ways to go. So, I'm gonna stop here and thank you so, so much for watching and listening. I hope you get lots and lots of good REM sleep. Sorry. Sleep. And as always, I hope all your dreams are sweet. So, shit, but I may as well focus on looking at different, trying to weigh our options, but I may as well focus on Okay, this, this is not going well. So thank you all so so much for watching and listening. I hope you get lots and lots of good REM sleep and as always